Really? She's dumb? I don't really watch the show myself because it's for chicks. I'm not allowed to watch. I feel like I'm invading private territory. No, yeah, you know. really, that is definitely not men territory there. And I know I hate Star Jones because she's a big fatso and she's always got something oh. bad to say about me. Oh. No, she's just, you know, and who is she? Who is she, really? Nobody. She's always mouthing up. And then that other one I hate, too. Meredith Vieira. Meredith Vieira. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like no one's been inside her pants in the last 10 years. Oh, oh no. Get the whip out. Am I right or am I wrong? Get the whip out. I mean, uh... These are, you know, the thing that maybe they are genuine because they seem very angry to me, though. Yeah. And who, the other broad, uh, Joy uh, Behar. Joy Behar. You know. I'm going to have a good time. Wherever, That's what you say. Wherever I go, my attitude is I'm going to have a good try. time. My attitude is. <laughs> it might be your attitude. doesn't mean you're going to have one. Well, what are you going to talk to them about? I, I don't know. Shucks. Whatever's going Who on. will handle the interview? You know, because they're like a singing group. Everybody has to get the lead. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think will handle it? Have you just had, you had a pre-interview with them? Uh, yeah, I had a pre-interview with them. And, it, and they didn't tell you who will be asking the questions? Any one of them can rock it as far as I'm concerned. Well, let's hope they're not on their period together. Oh, well, they right? have to be, <laughs> <laughs> Too many. They do, because women who work together get their periods at the same yeah, time. I know Robin and I get our periods at the same We're time. We're always on the same cycle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, I think you've done a pretty good job of shedding the Urkel image, because first of all, wait, as wait, Robin wait, says... What are you talking about, shedding the Urkel well, image? Well, I'm going to lead into my thesis. Okay, all right. Because, because Robin says, like, you take, uh, like, leave it a beaver... Okay, Beaver. Like, he's still Beaver. He's still Beaver. Yeah. You know, and and uh, you take and then you take Gary Coleman or Webster. Neither one of them managed to even grow. Well, they're both significantly shorter than me. Right. I was always nervous you wouldn't grow. Right. We yeah, thought you were going to be one of those guys. It seemed like the curse of every kid that, actor. Emmanuel Lewis is literally one of the coolest celebrities I have ever met in my entire. Did you hang with him. I have hung out with Emmanuel Lewis. How can you hang out with him? Tell up to your knee. Right. Hey, why, how are you going to judge? How are you guys of all people on this show going to judge somebody because of their height? <laughs> but seriously, though, when you hang around with him... You pick him up? Did you, have you ever had, like... Oh, pick Manny up. Manny would probably swing on me if I tried to pick him but up. But is it hard to think of him as a man because he's in the trap in that little boy's body? Not really. I'm is he you, dating? I, I listen to more of what's coming out of somebody's mouth, and I'm telling you, this guy has got a serious, serious head Really? Control. And where did you meet him? I'm... I met Manny just through the business. and Manny. You know, that's Manny. And it's <laughs> Manny? That's an old Jew, man. Yeah, Manny. He's over at the deli. What do you do? You put him in your knapsack and you guys go out for dinner? Oh. Oh. Do you oh. pick up women together? Yeah. Pick up Where women. do you go? Toys R Us? We did, we did go to a club, though. Yeah. Did, oh, that's got to be fun. Ah. We did go to a club. i got to introduce uh, Jaleel to uh, Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait a second. Let me understand something. Where do you meet Manny? Emmanuel Lewis. <laughs> um, he actually he did uh, he did he did Family Matters. Okay, so okay. the two of you obviously related to one another because yeah. you both played, you know, as kids, you were child, stars. You were child right stars. All right, all right. So yeah. there's something to talk about there. Exactly. And and when you're talking to him, you can relate to him as an adult, even though he's trapped in a child's body. It definitely. And right. I mean, I just think he has a firm handle on how to deal with this business, especially having grown up in this madness. So I, I, I can learn a lot. From so him now you do you go over his house? Uh, when I was in Atlanta, yeah, we visited. I visited him. Does he have a mansion? Is he a very well? He must be wealthy. Well, his house was being remodeled at the time, so I couldn't. I couldn't go. He came to pick me up. Right. But and does he have a regular sized car? Yeah, he's good. Does he drive? Yes. How he, does he drive? He drives this huge, huge freaking truck. This yeah, but does he? Does he have special pedals so he can reach? Seriously? Okay. Yes, he does. But okay. I'm a friend, so I am not going to bash. No, him. No, no, no. I don't want you to bash him. I'm oh, curious about him. Is his is his whole house scaled down? Like when you go in the toilet, it's very right, low to the like ground. Down and crawl in. No, seriously, I would do it. Like, I, I built my house up for a tall guy. I mean, yeah. the ceiling's high. He has a dollhouse. Right. He has a dollhouse. <laughs> Howard, I would, yeah. I would venture to say that his house is as big as your house. No, I don't doubt no, that. No, no, no. We're I'm just, just saying, saying, is everything low? Yeah. No, everything was normal. He just kind of. But the mirror would have to be low. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And the chairs. And the chairs. Man, and yeah, the money to counters. hire somebody to, to hold him up to the mirror. If he does, he live, does he live by himself or does he have a chick? Uh, I think he lives by himself. He does. He's yeah. a bachelor. Yeah. All right. Definitely. And can so this, you went to the club. Can this kid get laid? Definitely. 
I would put it past him. Really? You don't I'm know? I'm telling you, I would put it. He is did so you cool. See him you didn't see any chicks? The lady. I, did I see him talking to the lady? We walk in the club, he just grabs two girls, and we go straight to the dance floor. No <laughs> high posting in the corner. And when, you go to, and, when you go to the, and when you go to the club, does he dance on top of the table, or does he dance on the dance floor? He's on the dance floor getting his groove thing <laughs> on. Really? All right. And, and let, me, let, me, let me understand something. Hey, baby, you want a dance floor? So when you talk... Great night. So when you talk with him... Do you talk about women and stuff? You talk about anything you would talk to. Did he ever bring up Michael Jackson and sitting on the ki on the on the kids' lap? Carried around. Though. Carried him. That had to be a horrible experience for him. I really didn't talk to him about. I don't believe that. See, I Michael think, Jackson I never called like, you, did he? I would, no, Mike didn't call me. I think I was too big for Mike. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're, you're too, too big, tall. I was too black. I wanted the two. I <laughs> you're too know. black, too tall. You got a mustache. <laughs> you're too something. Right. So wait a second. Because for a time in Emmanuel Lewis's life, yes. now this to me, if I had him sitting here, I would have to ask him this. For a time, he would be on Michael Jackson's lap all the time, and it had to be confusing to him because he, he was, was really like a mascot. He was 13 years old when he was sitting on that guy's lap. He was probably older than it that. It was right. worse than just sitting on his lap. Michael never let his feet touch the ground. All right, so what do you think? What do you say about that? Hey, man, I don't know the nature of that relationship. Oh, yes, you do. And you never <laughs> ask? <laughs> you do, too. I know you do. How could you not ask? What do you say you don't know the nature of that relationship? That sounded like the answer from a witness stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this ain't the, none of this counts. Hey, he's been coached by a lawyer. You know the funniest thing about this room? People understand the configuration. You're getting it from all sides. Of here. Right, right, yeah. If somebody runs out of something to say, someone else will think of something. <laughs> So, so, uh, wait a second. So, I got to tell you this story. Okay. I'll tell you, you're a good sport. So, we're on the plane. And by the way, I want to explain something. I'm coming back from Los Angeles. Now you're going to. Yeah, let me explain this, okay? Because right. I know you were giving me a strange look back there in business class. I wasn't going to say that. No, no, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? That I, I'm down on bad times? No, I wasn't thinking you were down on bad times at all. I was just like, you know, wow. I mean, I. I, I really thought didn't know he was what a to big think. star. Right. Yeah, I didn't know what to think. Really. All right, listen to this. Let me explain. Maybe Your CBS is being big. cheap, man. No. You think about not doing the show. <laughs> yeah, you guess you you're not a big star. Honestly, you really, you really want to know what I thought? Right. I thought something obviously has gone wrong with this guy's plans, and this guy is really a big person because most celebrities will say, screw it, I am not flying if I'm not ah. flying first class. So I, when I saw you in business class, like I said, this guy's really cool. This guy's down to earth because he's got to get back for work, and it doesn't matter. He's going to get on his plane. Funny you say that. Wow. Now, here's what happened. It was a good Funny you say that. You here's made. what happened. First of all, it wasn't CBS. Was, I was flying out there on my own dime. Okay. I, I fly first class because I want to feel like I'm happening. Well, by the way, they lose your luggage if you don't fly first class. Exactly. <laughs> so I was booked on American Airlines to fly home at 1 o'clock. So I get to the airport. They tell me the flight's canceled. Oh. Okay. And you know what? I, I've cool. been kind of disappointed in first class because I used to go to Los Angeles all the time. I see big celebrities. Yeah. Always see big celebrities in first class. I was always excited to come back and talk to Robin about it and everything, how we interacted. Yeah, we'd have a good time off his trip. Yeah. So I get to the airport and they tell me it's canceled and they say, well, there's a flight at 145 on United. So you must have been booked on that flight to begin with. Or you, were you booked on American? I was booked on that flight, on the United flight, because I guess your entourage had taken up all the seats at first. There was nothing left. American right. Flight. So, so, <laughs> so you get to American. Julio from the flight. Yeah, so I was, so American was like all booked up. You know, it was canceled. Three o'clock was all booked up. They said, you go on 145. And the guy at special services says to me, but here's the deal. you got to fly in business class because Elizabeth Hurley has your seat. Well, not, not, that's not quite true. Well, that's what the guy said because he was the right guy right said <laughs> he would have. He would have given me the seat if I was flying he under my own name. Known who you were, right? But uh, Elizabeth Hurley flies under her own name. Two seats, right? So listen to this. <laughs> so now I'm saying to myself, "Oh crap! I, I mean, I'm going to be in business class, and Elizabeth Hurley is going to be in first class, and I'm not going to get to look at her, and she's going to think I'm a loser, and Probably I'm down on my luck." Friend. Yeah, right. <laughs> she wasn't looking at anybody. Really. So I get so I get on the plane. They sit me down in business class. I said, you know what? I don't want. I, my agent said to me, he would go back and wait the next day just to go home and first. Because we had come back, we had done some very successful yeah, that's what business. I said. Most people would do. Right. And I said, I said, I said, what's the big deal? So we're in hey, business you know, class. You're probably thinking nobody's been on these planes. Anyway. Yeah, it's going to suck anyway, yeah. right? So and so then you get on and I everybody. Sit, I'm sitting down business. in business class. <laughs> All of a sudden, I see Jaleel, <laughs> and I go, uh oh. Now Jaleel's going to think I'm a loser and that I'm down on my luck and I'm you cheap. Right. The thing is that a couple of weeks ago you were on the flight with John McEnroe. And he was in business class. And he was in business and you were making fun. Ooh, I, the stewardess came up to me and said, I guess he's not doing that well. So so now I'm thinking, so crazy, you're so man. cold. That's so crazy. So I see Jaleel. And Jaleel, you travel with some brother, right? Yeah, I was traveling Who's it, with your friend? Yeah, buddy of mine. Yeah. I 
see there was a whole thing going on there. What? Yeah, he's got like a Ralph that I travel with. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> a man. Yeah. Your and best the, friend. And the man looks out for him and stuff, you know. Right. Yeah. So, uh, in case it gets grimy in the streets, you know. Yeah. And what's the deal? Your man doesn't even work except for you, right? No, he keeps got his own job. He does? He's literally a friend, man. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Thank you. All right. So. All of a sudden, Khalil sees me. He is a nice guy. He's a friendly guy. He comes back to say hi. I'm he saying to myself, back to business. I want to just say, hey, listen, I was supposed to be in first class. <laughs> so Jaleel was very nice. And then he goes back, walks up to first class, and, of course, the curtains close. That's right. They snap that curtain Because people in first class don't want to be seen with the riffraff in business. <laughs> and I'm like, man, the hell is that? I'm out. <laughs> so I, so my agent goes, man, look at Elizabeth Hurley. She's wearing like a little sarong now dress. how did he see her? Does you he didn't think she was her? hot? No. You didn't? No. Why really? are you saying that? Did you see the belly and the... Not at all. No. And, the, and, the, and, and the no bra? He got closer because he was in first class. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's not your thing? I think she's hot. She's all right, man. Oh, please. She's you see what it is? You don't want to give her the time of day because you don't want her to think she's hot. She didn't look at you. She was serious. She was, and be quite honest, she's kind of flat on the backside for me. Oh, really? Yeah. You wouldn't bang her? Um, it's just not my style, man. Yeah, really? Like Grant. It's not my style. Yeah, whatever. You can yeah. be in the booth with that one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you had your choice between a hooker and, and, and Elizabeth Hurley, you would take the hooker, just like you, Grant, did. Well, obviously, <laughs> if you look at the shape between Divine Brown and Elizabeth Hurley, you can see that Hugh and Hugh Grant probably has the same taste that I do. Though. Really? You would go for Divine Brown? Divine was hot, man. Interesting. Divine was hot. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, anyway. so That whole standing on a street corner at midnight thing, though, kind of is a little <laughs> turn off. Yeah, she might have been with a few guys. <laughs> so then I see Donahue's in first class. He Jaleel. Was, that was really Donahue. Yeah, yeah that was Donahue, right? Before. Donahue was in first Phil Donahue was in first class with I you. never even saw him. Yeah, he was there. Wow. Yeah. Who else no, was in seriously, first class? I didn't even know. It was Phil Donahue, you... Elizabeth, I go, finally, a really good scene. He's in first class. I would have gotten that broad talking. <laughs> I'm telling you, that You know you would have been quiet up there. She was snobby? Yeah, man. She wasn't saying much to me. Oh, I would have gotten her talking. I was even talking. I was even talking, and she looked over her shoulder like, how dare you speak? Can't you see I'm trying to sleep? Oh, that bitch. <laughs> but you know how those beautiful women are. They usually keep their head right exactly. to the wall. You know what I was, exactly what she yeah. did. You know what I was That's hoping? exactly what she did. I'm, like, I'm so cool on that. I'm like, yo, just be yourself, man. <laughs> right. Nobody's checking for you. You should have gone up and said, hey, I'm TV's Urkel. <laughs> you shut up. All right? All right. So, so wait a minute. You started off talking about how he's beaten that whole image. Thing. All right. But, but anyway, but the whole time I was but fantasizing. You somebody when you really want to smile. Uh -huh. I was fantasizing about a great movie. So this plane goes down. We hit an island. Everyone's dead uh -oh. except for me, Jaleel, Donahue, and Elizabeth Hurley. <laughs> Who gets the game? Yeah. Okay, under those circumstances, yeah. I might have to go. For you it. might have to bang. <laughs> no, I had in you the movie. In the movie, you bang Donahue, oh, and then yeah. I bang uh, Elizabeth. You're all gonna <laughs> die because none of you've ever done anything I for yourself. You <laughs> wouldn't go down that way, Howard. Right. I assure you. Oh, you think none of us know how to live on <laughs> our own? <laughs> Do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. You better hope us. So we're getting off the plane. I'll tell you how, how much of a gentleman you are. So we're getting off the plane. Uh huh. And this guy, um, uh, oh my agent, he couldn't find his luggage. He says to the stewardess, "Hey, I don't know where my suitcase is." And she goes, "Hey, it's right behind Arco." Oh. <laughs> And then Jaleel, like, leaned over and afterwards, like, thanked the same woman for yeah. being so nice. That was that woman you thanked. Yeah. She's the one who called you Urkel. Yeah. I can't help it if she didn't have any class about what she said. Yeah. I felt bad. But she had given me really good service, and, hey, thanks a lot. Right, right. No, that was nice of you. But I was pissed when she yelled out, hey, right behind Urkel. It's like, you know, hey, man, what is that? Enough with you. Enough with you, Urkel. You know, I, I'm, most people don't just really don't know what to say. I right. Think, yeah. right. Well, because you were saying that, and I, just the other day I pulled out one of those TV guide yeah. things from a local magazine, yeah. and they have Jaleel as he is today, and then a little picture of Urkel in the corner. Hey, what is Urkel? Hey, you made a lot of money. You made millions doing that, Urkel. Urkel I like that. Not bad. Like that Urkel character is pretty damn good. Yeah, Urkel was not bad. Part money, but it was okay. Oh please, <laughs> please. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You know, it's funny because I think he's such a nice guy, and he's been here before. And one of the guys that works here, I won't say who it is, came up to me and he goes, "You know, I was watching the Hip Hop Awards last week, and they got all these guys, these rappers coming up, and then all of a sudden they bring up a presenter, and it's Urkel. Yeah, he's a goofing off. What's his point? That, that Urkel, Urkel doesn't belong be with those guys. Oh, uh, yeah. you got to so, fight that all the time. Nah, I don't have to fight that. I feel right at home with those guys. I you know. do? Most of them. Yes. Yeah. Well, according to the guy from me, you know. Did you see that award show, board. Howard? What? That award show came on just as we were going on vacation. I didn't know if you'd seen it. I saw some of it, yeah. It was the, the rapping know, award show? Right. I, I, I could imagine you hiding under your bed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was hidden under the bed. 
I was afraid someone from the TV would come out and attack me. That was a pretty dangerous <laughs> award show. That was a wild show. Cool. I sat in front of Don King. Oh, yeah. Don, Don comes on the show. Busta Rhymes was on there. It looked uh -huh. like he had some sort of posse up there with him. But you need an interpreter. I didn't even know what anybody was talking about. I don't either. I, don't, I knew what Jaleel was talking about. Yeah, but everybody else was speaking that language. Did you speak to... Uh, did, you know how to talk rap? <laughs> <laughs> you know how to talk jive talk? Seriously. <laughs> I, I understood what everybody was. You so you are fluent in Ebonics. I'm I'm, I'm very fluent. Is really? that right? I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know you spoke he Ebonics. Spoke, he speaks two languages. <laughs> That's pretty good. And did Don King pick your pocket, or he was a gentleman that night? Don King <laughs> is a player, man. He sure is. Don King comes. He, first of all, he comes into the building, and he's got this guy yelling the same stuff that uh, that guy yells that brings Mike Tyson in the ring, like Allah Akbar, Allah, whatever. Right, 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 right. Not right. to disrespect anybody's religion, but I guess he's, he's <laughs> screaming something like this, and he's going, uh, Don King in the new millennium, Don King in 2000. Everybody's turning around like, yeah. Don King in the new millennium, Don King in 2000. What is it? What is he, boxing? <laughs> yes, and a boxing and he, match? And he came down with the funny part about it, though. This, he was just fronting. He was, and that, that's ebonic for just pretending. This yes. is the funniest thing because <laughs> he's coming down the aisle and he's got like five or like 12 people with him, right? And so they just sit down right behind me, six and six seats each row. And then all of a sudden, the real people who have those tickets show up. <gasps> oh, like eight no. Of those people <laughs> leave. He only had four seats. <laughs> <laughs> that, I was, that was a hysteric. So when he walks in the room, he has a guy yelling and stuff. And, uh, and, and, and yeah. yelling and everything. It was so fun. I mean, it was hilarious. He was the biggest star in the room doing this. <laughs> right, right. You know, and he's got, like I said, he has 12 people, though. But unbeknownst to us, he's only got four seats. He's like he's like Julius Caesar yeah, walking so into the room. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so. As a matter of fact, he came in with one of the owners in Caesar's Palace. So, hey, hey, so t t do me a favor. So tell me, uh, when, so when you were a kid growing up, yeah, right. I, I mean, you were famous for a long time, even before your TV show, because you did a lot of TV work yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you did a lot of TV work mm -hmm. and stuff. All right. So, so um, there's a couple of stories. One of the stories I read about you was about Della Reese. Which I thought was really good. What's that? Right, you know who Della Reese is? Of course she she's on that touched by an angel. Yeah, she got that big gray piece of hair. Yeah, the skunk hair. The skunk hair, dude. Right. So anyway. So you got to know Della Reese as a kid, right? Yeah, I did a show with her with Flip Wilson, may you rest in peace. Uh, yeah, Flip's a great guy. Yeah. Um, and, Flip uh, let us touch his um, fake yeah, penis. Yeah, I saw what you did to oh, poor Flip. What do you mean I did? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I didn't do it. Offered. <laughs> just, be, just because an elderly man offers to whip it out, you don't necessarily let him do that. Oh, please. Well, all right, anyway, so, go, so that's not the point of the story. So but I did a show with her called Charlie Company with Flip Wilson, and uh, I really, you know, she, was, she played my grandmother. Right. And, um, and you, you got friendly with her. Yeah, I got real friendly with her. As a matter of fact, she used to hold these church services at our home. Right. And my mother would take me, and I would, like, you know, wait in the bedroom while the ladies were worshiping and whatnot. Well, she's like Your a preacher. Your mother would go to yeah. the services. Yeah, I mean, you know, Hey, it's Della Reese. You figure, why not? Yeah, she actually performed somebody's but wedding. But then after a while, I guess Della started asking for money. Right. And it was like, my mom kind of got hip to the game. It was like, oh, I see what this it's is It's not about. just a prayer meeting. Exactly. This is not a prayer meeting. So you get, like, four weeks of cool prayer meeting, and then you get the fifth week. <laughs> of membership dues. Right, and it's a hefty number, I bet. Yeah, of course, it was probably a stupid number at the time. I right. was wow, right. nine years old. But anyway, I saw her at a play probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe a year later, show's been canceled. We're off the air. We don't, you know, right. not visiting her anymore. And I was so excited. I dashed all the way across. Because you're a kid. And I was I was excited. literally about 10 years old. I dashed all the way across the entire, um, the entire uh, auditorium. And I'm like, Della, Della, do you remember me? Do you remember me? And she just looks at me just as stone faced as ever and says, Yes, I remember you. And just goes right back to me. Oh, wow. And what made it worse was my arms were like outstretched. Oh. You know, you, you, you know, you're, and like, you're a little you kid. A hug. And you're a little kid. So, she dissed you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the, the Because you didn't give money to the church. This is the. <laughs> That's what it's about. And he's well, nine years old. You don't know. Right. So this maybe the, Della this could this be mad at you. Know. Maybe yeah. Della could be mad at your mom for some reason, but not you. You're a kid. Whatever, man. Rejected by an angel. <laughs> <laughs> Forget her. Do an episode like that. Yeah. And what happened when you were at UCLA Film School? Everyone told me to ask about that. What oh, happened? Oh, no. It's just, you know, it's funny. I, I, I go to school and right. you try to sit in and blend in with a class of like 200, 300 people. And every blue moon, you know, when you're in these critical studies classes about television and whatnot. Right, right. Uh-oh. They start doing a little commentary about you. And everybody in the class... In this one particular case, knew that I was in the class. Right. This lady basically started working away from Emmanuel Lewis, Gary Coleman to bingo me. Right. And so I'm like slumping down in my chair and whatnot. She calls me like, 
in the middle of his class, he says, well, you know, I think his character was a, you know, a, a Sambo, and, you know, it was, it, right. she, just, it, it, she just berated my character, just as, <laughs> as bad. And she as didn't she know you were sitting there. She had no idea I was sitting there. Really? Oh, and then expects to come up to me after the class, after somebody finally tells her, you've made a complete ass of yourself. Right. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry, and whatever, whatever, and she was a handicapped girl. I don't pick up me afflicted, so I was like, well, oh, you're a nice guy. I was like, he thanked her, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't thank her, no. I, I gave her that, you know what you did, look. <laughs> just went on about my it was hard for you to get laid. Though. I, I figured you were getting laid around 12 years old and stuff. Oh, but you, didn't, you go in my bedroom. At 17, <laughs> 17, you uh, still had not gotten laid. You were a virgin, right? I was a virgin, yeah. You were. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I can't figure that yeah, out. You, you, you understand. You understand. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, it was not that I could not get laid. You just right. understand. I'm a late bloomer, and I absolutely love sports. That's all oh, I So you weren't about. even in right. the girl. I was, I was taking my basketball to school when I was in the 11th grade, and I couldn't right. understand why the guys didn't want to play at lunchtime anymore. They didn't want to get stinky for the girls. Right, right. You didn't care. I didn't care. You I were afraid. a late bloomer. I, I wanted to hoop. Wow. I wanted to hoop. Just think you could have been feeling up Della Reese when oh, you were nine oh, years old. <laughs> You could have had her, maybe. You had a shot. So, so, so when you were seventeen, was when you first started asking out girls. I'd say when I was, yeah, I, I didn't realize until about two months before graduation. I was like, wow, we got some really cute girls in our school. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you woke up. And, and you realized that it was too late. A guy in your Everybody position already been knocked off. But a guy in your position could have gotten any girl. I don't know about that. But Pretty much. I, I could have gotten a couple extra yeses, maybe. And th and then did you make up for uh, lost time? Did you uh, did you take advantage of the situation? I don't know if I made up for lost time. I just you know go mm. into my own. So what at what age were you when your fingers hit paradise? Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> what is that? You uh -oh. know what I mean. That's ebonics. <laughs> no, you know when you when you, when you started I didn't to get that. Who got the sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> not me, not me. That isn't me. Right, but you currently have a girlfriend. Yeah. Uh-oh. That's a, a lucky lady. Who told you that? No, I, I got it in my we notes. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah. Researchers. And you, you met her at Martha's Vineyard, it says. Yeah. She, That's where you vacation. Yeah. No kidding. She's, she's, she's a hot broad model? She's great. No. I don't. I told you, man. I don't mess with people in this business. You don't? I just, Why? Nah, I, don't, I don't. You know, I don't know if you can. I, That's okay. funny, but you can't say it. <laughs> Is she a Kennedy? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, she's... um. No, not at all. She's, she's not a candidate. She's a very bright lady, just moving right. up the corporate ladder. And uh, really, young girl. Yeah. So is this yeah, a recent new? Twenty two. Yeah, it's kind of new. Mm. Like, like three months. Yeah. Twenty two. Yeah. Mm. I remember twenty two. Is it the first serious relationship? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the first relationship where I really feel like I, I uh -oh. really admire the person for who they are. Mm. Don't be stupid and get married. That's cool. Hey, I'm now I'm fighting it. I'm fighting it. <laughs> wow. Really? I'm fighting it. Whoa. But at the same time, though, you got to acknowledge when somebody special comes into your life. Yeah, yeah. Date them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have a talk with you later. I mean, for God's sake. Take sakes. them under your wing. I'll take you under your wing. <laughs> you know all the things you find cute about her right now? Yeah. About ten years, it's going to be real annoying. Oh, cool. <laughs> Every last one of them? Not none of them? No, I'm sure, I'm sure. But I don't know why, though. That from what I noticed, though, guys that are married are more successful in the long run. That is yeah, true. Yeah, because they don't want to go home. That's it. <laughs> they they want to keep working. <laughs> you, may, you, got, you got buff lesbians flowing through here, but you got a wife at home that That's really right. loves you. Yes, she does. Uh, <laughs> I guess. You know, I was going to say to you, though, if you killed your girlfriend tomorrow, You'd be free in 10 years. <laughs> Think that through. Is that right, Robin? I don't know if you get... Did we want to figure that out? You get more time for a girlfriend. I don't than know, you but do I finally wife. made the oh. cover of People magazine. Yes, you certainly was. <laughs> I, and they probably darken your picture, too. Yeah, you got to do the OJ treatment. That's right, the OJ treatment. It happens. <laughs> You'd have little pictures of all the other past fallen child stars. Oh, yeah, it would be a real mess. Decorating the, the outside of my line. head. Yeah. yeah. So, so you got this new TV show. Yeah. You're on uh, UPN. It's called Grown Ups. Yeah. Now let's I hear that. you're supposed to be my partner soon. Well, we'll see about that. Uh, we'll see yeah. about that. I'm not going to make any any statements. Uh, that's on the QT. Yeah, what is that's that? Court of law. What about court of law? DL. All right. You talk about your show, Grown Ups. Yeah. Now, this I assume you are grown up on this show. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. It's just about I don't know. It's about being a. Uh, being a grown up but not really feeling like one, and uh, I'm, I'm definitely at that age right now. So me too. Friends. I'm at the same age. I know we're still there. Yeah, I don't feel grown up. So you know, it's 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 really I really like the point of view of the piece. And I was reading a review of the show that said that in many instances, you will take off your shirt to show your very muscular Are you body. Are like becoming? Uh, <laughs> Are you a sex symbol now? You know what? You know what? 
<laughs> you know what? Some insecure fat bastard <laughs> just knows he should have been in the gym and then he's just, right. you know, taking right. a knock on me. No, not it's not a knock. You got a good physique. You no, like showing it. I don't know. We about were discussing that. this earlier. It's always congruous to the story. Believe me, whenever I have to take off. You don't do shirt. frivolous nudity. Is what you I'm say. just walking around just showing flesh. Why did you take what? your show? Do why you why, why do you take your. reaction to, you know, your previous character yes. who was, you know, supposed to be a major. Yes. This is a way to say to the ladies that you are now a yeah. man, yeah. that you have a man's body. Okay, if you want to write a critical studies paper about <laughs> it, maybe there is some validity there, though. Right. But, you know, it's... Why, it, why it in works. the show, though, do you take your shirt off? Why is it... How is it... Uh, well, okay, if you're in bed and you're have, with a young lady, chances are you're not going to have a shirt on in that, that situation. Well, I do, and I'm in bed. <laughs> I always make sure I have a well, shirt on. Howard, let me let you in on a little tidbit. I remove mine. Really? <laughs> Show off. Works better that way. That's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, so you're getting laid on a regular basis, huh? That's nice. Uh, yeah, good for you. You got to be careful. Don't knock her up. Uh, I hope you're wearing a rubber. Uh, You'll be strapped. I'll tell you for cash. I go. Um, That's it. I'm the poster boy for condom use. You are. Poster boy. Really? Even when you get oral sex? Oh, whoa! <laughs> uh, man, they come like bullets from you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> No, but, but hey, at least I'm sincere, not like Kathy Lee. I want to know. I respect that, but right. dang, they come like bullets for you. No, during oral sex, you don't uh, wear that rubber, do you? Who's with the button again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I don't know. Not that, that safe. I am. Yeah. <laughs> not that safe. You don't, need, you don't need a combination and a padlock. You need a combination. <laughs> hey, it's overkill. <laughs> Know, that's uh, interesting. <laughs> Want to take a few phone calls or not? No, yeah, we take some phone All right, a couple of phone calls. The show is called Grown Ups. It can be seen Monday nights on UPN. UPN, the great network that also carries Star Trek. That's right. Wait, Voyager. Wait, wait. WWF. And WWF. That's right. I'm wrestling. a Star Trek man. Wrestling is a force to be reckoned with. I was watching UPN last night for Star Trek. Yeah. Voyager was a repeat, but I didn't care. I'll great watch any show. of them. Great show. There was a good one where uh, they go back in time, and their time's all over the place, and... The Chinese guy gets old. Yeah, right. I saw the gray streaks in his hair as I was flipping yeah. through. Yeah, he gets old. Hmm. He looked like Della Reese, actually. <laughs> Brian, you're on the air. Howard. Yeah. Hey, how are you, buddy? It's Brian. Big fan. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, question for Urkel. Uh, oh! Jaleel. Uh, Jaleel. Uh, right uh, Jaleel. 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 Sorry. I love the show, by the way. Uh, thank I you. I still man. watch it. Uh, you ever hook up with Laura Winslow? I always thought she was uh, really hot. The girl that played Laura. Ah, you little troublemaker, now. Nah. Did you ever uh, bang any of the chicks from the uh, show? Yeah, you know. Your one that was your girlfriend. That sounds like a yes. Oh, yo, yo. Be, she, I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you right yeah. now, man. Be careful what you say because she passed away, man. Right? Right. I'm so sorry. She was a really beautiful girl. Yeah, she was very beautiful. Young lady. So she was never your. Uh, what did she pass away from? No, she passed away from cancer. Just really? Yeah. Young girl? How Wait, old? Remember, I told you that story. Yeah. She had, like, stomach cancer or something. Yeah, right? I remember that now. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Were you close with her? Yeah, very close. Very close. Really you cl beautiful. you still close with all the people from the show? Um, a few cast members, but just few people have gone on. Uh, but you never were lovers or anything? But no, 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 no. You were never lovers with any of the people on the show? No, no, that's... How'd that happen? I just told you my motto, man. Don't, uh... Yeah, where don't, you eat? Don't, <laughs> don't go to the bathroom where you eat. Where you eat? No, don't mess where you eat. <laughs> you can eat where you eat, though. You damn right. Nah. <laughs> All right, uh... Let's, uh, see who else is on here. Okay, Sean, go ahead. You're on with Jaleel. What's up, what's up? How you Alex? doing, Sean? Robin? Yeah. Jack? Yo, brother, you came a long way. Thank you, man. Yeah, I remember. I'll I be growing up with you back, oh, back in the day. Oh, God. This is a white guy. You. Get out of here. <laughs> You're a white guy. <laughs> I'd be growing up with you. <laughs> Who's this, Marion Barry? Yeah. Now, my name is Sean. I'm from Roosevelt. Sure you are. <laughs> ah. I appreciate you, <laughs> This is Sean McMurphy. <laughs> Your bro, bro Jaleel, man, he was a loser. What? Yeah, no ass back in the uh, day. <laughs> back in the day. Really? <laughs> yeah. I think this is a white guy trying Ebonics. Yeah, I believe so. a very good job of it. Uh, uh, it if you call, you should have something like decent to say, or at least don't let everybody know. You have said that some of the... You, <laughs> <laughs> you, you just said that some of the cast members on your on your uh, TV show were very mean to you. Is that what? true? They were jealous of your success, weren't they? Well, that's going to happen. Some right. people feel threatened by you. I can tell who was threatened. Reginald Veljum. Yeah. I'm not calling any The guy who played the father. I'm not calling any you know You're a very intuitive man. It that show was developed for him. Be his show. That's right. And you came in and stole it, didn't you? In fact, Urkel was originally just, just a one-shot deal, wasn't that's it? Right. Yeah. Oh. And then he had to do all these scenes with you. Yeah. I 
like that. We actually had great chemistry together, though. Yeah. On, on camera, but off camera was a different story, wasn't it? Perhaps at times. He didn't realize how good that was for him, did he? Yeah, you know, I put it this way. I'm not going to bash anybody's character, but I just I feel like, to me as an actor, you should strive to want to be on stage with peers, with people mm -hmm. that can, you can learn from as well. As, Why not? If it shows you know, a success. And, and exactly. Just give and take. It's like my goal really as an actor is to be on stage with the Hackmans and the Denzel Washingtons and the Pacinos. And the best you can be. I really don't give a darn who gets top billing. I just want to get out there and learn. It and was awfully petty of this guy to treat you that way, especially you being a child. Kid, yeah. You put up with a lot of crap, haven't you? I mean, uh, being, are you sorry your parents pushed you into being a child actor? No, nah, they didn't push me into being a child actor. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that I just did naturally. And I, I well, wait a minute. Me. You can't drive yourself anywhere. No, no, not at all. But it was like it was something that my mother, she, I guess she realized that I was, I was pretty good at. I mean, I started booking jobs right away. Do you feel your childhood was robbed from you? Absolutely not. Really? I feel like I feel like it's some school and did all that. Yeah, stuff. I did. All, I did all that stuff. I, I did all that stuff. And I, another thing, I just make it. I make it a point really to hang out with normal people. That, that Where do you find them? Yeah, how do you find normal people? You go to school, man. You go to school. You go to school. You go to school. Yeah, but how do you know they want to be with you? There are ways to find out. Yeah. There are ways to find out. Hmm. Believe me, it's just like your intuition jumps several notches when you, you're working in this business as a child. Really? I should have been in it as a child. Maybe yeah, I've done we have no intuition. Everybody <laughs> seems to want to hang out with me because I'm famous. Dwayne, you're on the air. Any hot actresses? <laughs> nah, I haven't, I haven't had the good fortune of dating any hot actresses, but uh, oh, Howard. Yeah. Oh, for me? <laughs> no, I don't I date any either. You haven't dated any <laughs> yeah. Howard. Yeah. I want to know, could I meet Tamara Maui? It's my dream to meet her. Please. Who? Who? Tamara Maui. Well, what do you want to do with Tamara? Because Tamara's a staunch Christian. So if you got any bad ideas, man. No, I just want to meet her. Uh -oh, okay. Like to be your friend or something. You want to get down with her? Yeah, I want to be her friend. It's like telling you if you see her. Oh, I've seen Oh, get out of here. This guy's a loser. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. I would just pull out the hot Did you ever make out with uh, Whitney Houston? <laughs> oh, please. Yeah. No, you never got her? She came to our stage once. She did. Beautiful kid. woman. She's a very beautiful woman. I would have sex with her. Big entourage. And what you do? You only date black Bobby chicks or would you date a white chick? I, I'd date anybody. You would? I would date anybody. Oh, that's cool. What about this girl you're seeing now? She's black, though. She is black? Yeah. Must be hot. She's hot in the head. Mm. Mentally, <laughs> she's, she's great. Really? Did you get it up for Whoopi? Uh, I'm just trying to get it to send you a taste. What does that mean? I don't know. What does that mean? <laughs> I want to know his taste. Get it up for Whoopi. <laughs> Can you? Absolutely <laughs> not. Whoopi would be just Holy. like be my mother. Let me tell you who I like. Left Eye from TLC. That's well, my girl. I would go out with her. Ooh, I'd like to see that interview, having been left out. I'd let her burn down my house. But I, don't don't care care less. <laughs> I don't even care. Don't close your eyes. Honey, burn down my house. Just sleep with me. <laughs> yes, Jose. Yeah, hello? Yeah, hi. Hey, what's, hey, up? what's up, everybody? Hey. Um, I heard that uh, the guy who played the father, he was gay in uh, Family Matters. Is that true? Um, I read that in the Inquirer, didn't I? That's, that I, was, I didn't read that. That's an ugly rumor. That was an ugly rumor? I think, I'm, no. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Oh, your suspenders? Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> was there any truth to this? or you? Nah. No, it was not. not He's not gay. I mean, I've, I've even been called gay by radio stations and whatnot. I mean, I think once you make it, you get called gay. So. Yeah, there was rumors that you were gay for a while, right? That's actually something I laugh at. If you get, if you get called gay, it's like, hey, I think I'm doing well in my career right now. That's right. Two scenes with that guy. I mean, you know. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, I think Fred was calling you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true? <laughs> uh, Rosa, you're on the air. Hi, Howard. Yes. How you doing? You're on with Jaleel White. By the way, you can check out his new show tonight on UPN at 9 o'clock. Coming on tonight? That is right. Yep. Grown ups. Yeah, it looks really, really funny. Well, God, that's what I hope to be. <laughs> I hope you don't feel bad about people calling you Urkel because Urkel is going to live down through history. Well, I think the character will live in history, though, but it's kind of funny. It's like, you know, when a kid comes up to me and says it or whatnot, I don't mind, but when an adult comes up to me and says it at this point, especially, it's just like. It's, it's a little it's, annoying. It's either somebody going out of their way to be a jerk or just somebody who has no class, and so I don't you really understand I don't I don't how uh, Gary Coleman wound up clocking that one. Oh, you know what? On the, on, on the real, that I was so pissed about that verdict. I know what that woman did to provoke yeah. Gary. I, yeah. I don't have to be there to even know what that woman did to provoke Gary. Right. It just sucks that we live in a country where we have laws that we don't really completely understand you know, thoroughly ourselves, even as a citizens. But That's I know true. what that woman did. I, I, boy, I'd have been there to help him. Right. <laughs> I'd have clocked her too. I'd have clocked the big fat tail too. <laughs> Rose, anything else you want to say to Jaleel? He shouldn't have been so funny in the show. He shouldn't have been so funny in the show. He had success and he wouldn't have had this problem. That's right. right? That's right. Funny. All right, thank you. Tony, go ahead. Two more, we only got time for two more questions. Jaleel White. Yeah, how you doing? Yes. 
Yes, Howard. Yes. Listen, Dad, I want to ask you a little. Do you, do you plan to attend the Million Youth March? <laughs> the Million Youth March. Will you the be? Million Youth March? Well, I'm an adult now, so whenever right. uh, they have the Million Adult March, I'll... I'll That's right. That's that. when you're going to show up to that. I'll show up to that one. Yeah. you got to be careful at the Million Youth March. I don't, yes. I, I don't know what's going on with that one. Um, uh, Bob, go ahead. How you doing, Howard? How's everybody? All right, man. Listen, listen to you guys since 86. You guys got me through law school. Good. Got a question for you guys. Yeah? I always see him. You'll always see you courtside at Nick Game, first row. Yeah. And I always wanted to know, how do these celebrities get these tickets that everyone is dying for? How does that the Knicks, the Knicks just set you up with that, don't they? Nah, not the Knicks necessarily. The Knicks do sometimes. I think they take care of Puff right now. Right. Puff but Daddy is the man, yeah. Puff Daddy's the man. You're not going to knock Puff for his seats. Uh, <laughs> how do you get those front row seats? No, you, you end up just, you know, I guess as you move up the, the ladder of success or whatnot, you end up just making associations with people. Uh, in the business that who do you know? Seats. Come on, right, who do you know? Us. Give us the name of the person you know that gets well, those I, seats. I can tell you this: Spike Lee's not giving them to me. That's for sure. <laughs> right? Spike's not selling his seat even for anybody. Well, Spike Lee's been there for a long time, so right, he actually he down. I saw him. He, he was up here, and he came. he actually owns those seats. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so you have to, seat. you kind of like work. Your... You just, you just, you know, some people. You know, you right. up, you may end up having a genuine friendship with two guys that mm -hmm. own seats. You know, over there and over right. here. Okay, I get you. So that's how you do it. You got to know people. Yeah, you got to know people, man. All right. Those aren't being bought. All right, one last question. Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, Howard, I just wanted to say it was the mother on the show who was jealous. You that think? show was made for her. It was a spinoff from Perfect Strangers, and she <laughs> even left the show because of, uh, he was getting so much fame. Wow. So it wasn't the dad who was upset. Oh, you guys wanted to bash Reggie, though. But <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't Reggie. No, not really. Reggie was not jealous. It wasn't Reggie, huh? He was nice to you. I think Reggie, Reggie definitely grew into it, and after a while, he really became a really endearing person. Right, but the so mom. the mom was the one. Did she yell at you Who even stuff? noticed her? Hey, man, I got no words for that chick. Uh, <laughs> really? Who even Is that bad? I don't even know her name. I got no words for that chick. Really? I feel, I feel like by mentioning her name, I might be helping her career at this point. Wow. Really? So. Really? Has she tried to get in touch with you now that you have the new show on no, UPN? Not at all. No. Not at all. She knows better. She knows better. <laughs> she knows better. Well, how can you be mean to a little kid, though? She I mean, knows better. Was she mean to you? I mean, what do you want? A big fat yes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I want a big fat yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I want to drag it out of you. There's a book in you, my friend. <laughs> there is one. There is one. All right, Jaleel White, his uh, new show is called Grown Ups. It'll be on tonight. Check it out on UPN at 9 o'clock. He's doing the promotional tour. All right. And uh, leaving here to go to the view. I want to know your honest opinion. So seriously, tomorrow you just just lay it on me. You watch the show. And I'm I will watch the show. You, you're happy with the show, and you're ready to be reviewed by me. I'm ready to be reviewed by you. And you're in bed with chicks on this show. I'm in bed wow. with chicks. Are they hot? Hot, fine women. And what are they wearing when you're in bed? And they're wearing bodysuits. Nice. <laughs> Do you get aroused when you're in the bed with these girls? You know what's so funny? I was so worried about that. Of course I was so you do. Worried about you're a man. But you know, you got some, the sound effects, boy. <laughs> but you know, you you you've got so many people working around you. You're oh. concentrating on what you're doing. I'm serious. That's what happened. You just didn't. It didn't. He didn't obviously like can that. focus, Howard. I bet you have a big one. Whoa. I bet you do. I bet you do. I see the way you matured. Are you well hung? Is there a rattlesnake in your pants? Is there a rattlesnake in my pants? <laughs> I'm very small, I'll admit it. Woo. When I was on the set of Private Parts, in the bathtub scene, and I also was in bed with Mary McCormick, I was aroused the whole time. I didn't care who was around. But nobody knew. No, no. It was almost undetectable. But I'm telling you, I, gotta, I swear to you, this is the truth. I'm not saying it for radio. I was aroused in these scenes. I mean, it was fabulous. I can imagine if you really start going at it. Yes. Though. You don't make out and stuff with them in this Well, you well I really do, but it, 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 really, it. it didn't really get horizontal, you know. It, it it's still television, so it's not ever going to get real I horizontal. See. Not, I'm not going to be Wesley Snipes in Mo Better Blues. You know right, right, right. Putting right, you right. down for mm. his car. <laughs> Are you aroused right now? I just Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely this, this not. This interview I am, did not arrive. You know, you're a real so, professional. I am so flaccid right now. <laughs> really? <good. laughs> All right. That's all I want to know. All right, so it's called Grown Ups. There are chicks that are nude wow. in this show. They Tonight can, they can do that on UPN. What time? Nine o'clock. All right. And you think you'll get aroused when you talk to Star Jones later today? I doubt it. I'll keep it professional. Right, keep it professional. I'll keep it professional. Uh, grown Ups can be seen Monday nights. That's tonight okay. at 9 o'clock. So thanks, Jaleel, for stopping by. It's always good to have you here. Always good talking to you. And uh, we, will, uh, we will be uh, back. After these messages. Is it true you have an honorary uh, black belt in Taekwondo? Honorary? Yeah. What is that? Man, you know all my business. What is it? What What's is the a... secret? That's what I want to know. What, what, what do you mean by honorary? 
honorary. It's kind of like when people go to colleges, they get degrees, and you know they're just handing them. So you don't know. So you don't know karate. karate. No, I don't know karate. I'm crazy. I don't know karate. <laughs> you been in any fights? Yeah, when I was a kid. Really? When I was a kid, but now, shoot, the only thing that's going to take me is that, that's only going to take me to a court. Right? Can you kick some ass though? Put it this way: you never know what a man will do when he's pushed against the wall. I know I fought Fred once. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to use karate on that broad from the, the old show, the uh, mom? Uh, <laughs> you know yeah. exactly what Fred is supposed to He's actually got a pretty interesting story of what happened when he got picked on at school. What? Did, his dad had to come down to school and kick the crap out of him. Uh, your, dad, your dad had to kick some ass for you? No, my daddy. Man, dear, I was almost out of here. <laughs> you were almost I was done. almost out of here. Did your father come to school and take no, care of us? No, I was. I was. I was a. I was a young kid, probably about seventh, eighth grade. Right. Just you know. And his father didn't want to kill his investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kid was making really money or trouble. Two yeah. hundred pound kid just used to flick pencils in the back of my head in class. So you know, we've all been there. I, I guess I took the uh, the passive aggressive approach, and I just used to. I picked up the pencils and stuck them in my backpack, and say, "Hey man, if you want to keep flicking pencils." at me, you're going to buy a whole lot of pencils. Right. So he comes up to me and he says, I want my pencils back. And next thing I know, I'm getting launched across the back of the classroom. <laughs> yeah. So I broke out. I didn't even think about fighting. I mean, this guy's just huge. Right. There was no way you were winning. My dad came back to school with me. and uh, Helped you out. Yeah. No, he just came back to school with me. He's like, I just want to see the kid. I right. want to see the kid. You know, my dad was small when he was young. And, right. Um, I guess he went in the classroom and uh, he said something to the kid. Next thing I know, the kid ran into the next classroom and he's talking about getting his homies. Oh, man. <laughs> right, that's it. I'm going to go get my homies. <laughs> and I mean, the funniest part about this, this is the funniest but, part. But didn't you grow up in some rich neighborhood? No, I did not. I'm telling you, I grew up in a very nice neighborhood. Right. But, uh, you know, when you, Pasadena's kind of funny. You got to go to school on the bad side of Pasadena, even if you oh. live on the good side of Pasadena. Really? Where are these teachers? I mean, were there teachers while you're being lost? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah definitely. I mean, look, you, you got to pick these public schools carefully, man. These <laughs> teachers don't give a darn. No. I mean, I took Spanish at this school, man, and, and all I learned was how to play poker. Where are you living now? Like in Beverly Hills or something? Oh, no, I live near school. I live near UCLA. You do? Yeah. You drive a fancy car? I drive a, a what truck. What do you got? You got a truck? Yeah. Cops pull you over all the time? Cops pull you over. They do. Cops do pull you over. And then what do you do? Like, hey, listen, man, I was Urkel on TV. <laughs> my address is... Not even, you know, yeah. you got your jerk redneck cops out there, and then you got your nice cops out there. So right. I just, I deal with people based on what they're giving me. All right. All right. There you go. It's a whole situation. It's tough. It's tough. It mm -hmm. seems like it's tough. You know what you need? An Urkel license plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's exactly what I need. <laughs> Cops will leave you alone. <laughs> that's exactly what I need. All right. Do. The new sitcom, Grown Up. Check it out on UPN. Tonight, 9 o'clock. That's right. There's your car right now. I hear it. <laughs> All right. At 9 o'clock, check out the new show. And I'm going to I'm gonna watch it, and I'm going to look to see you with your shirt off and see these girls in bed with you. I think you'll like this. I bet you I will. <laughs> All right. We'll be back right after these words. I sympathize with him because here he is, the father of America.